Hello viewers and welcome to Learning with JGO. We shall be discussing in this video a summary and a detailed analysis of If We Must Die by Cloud McKay. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel to receive more updates like this. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the biography of the poet. Cloud McKay is an American poet born and raised in Jamaica. He was born in the year 1890 and began writing at the age of 10. In 1912, Mackay moved to the United States to study. In this very year, he published his first poetry book titled Songs of Jamaica, a work that began the journey of a very long career. Mackay moved to New York in 1914 and worked a number of jobs while nurturing his political beliefs. He would later become strongly involved with the socialist movement at the time. After traveling the world and visiting countries such as Morocco and Communist Russia, Mackay returned to America and officially became a citizen in 1940. He died on May 22, 1948, from a heart attack, aged 58. If You Must Die is a sonnet written by Claude Mackay in the year 1919. The poem was born during a period in the American society characterized by severe chaos between the blacks and the whites. The black community was targeted by the white lynch mob, a murderous group that evolved as a result of a suspected sexual assault that was said to have been committed by a black American. An unfortunate event that grew out from the seeds of racism got all blacks suffer oppression, humiliation and above all, persecution. In the first half of the year 1919 alone, as much as 28 public killings of black Americans was recorded. Riots became prevalent during this period, as some blacks decided to resist all forms of oppression by retaliating. No matter how hard they tried, they were always outnumbered and overpowered by the superior force of the whites. After witnessing the evils of racism that perverted the American society, the poet was motivated to express his deep feelings about the situation. Hence, the writing of this poem and many others. The poet calls out to his people to resist all forms of cruelty by fighting back. He prescribes violence as the only alternative to get his people out of this desperate situation of oppression. Mackay encourages the black community to adopt a sense of bravery and determination in fighting for their freedom because either way, they were going to die and they should rather die being heroes than cowards. Let's take a look at the line-by-line -line analysis of the poem. If we must die, let it not be like hawks, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our cursed lot. The poem commences with the speaker addressing a group of oppressed people not to die like hawks if they have to die. The oppressed group being discussed here is the black community in the United States that have faced varying degrees of cruelty and oppression, putting their lives under the threat of death. Given that the speaker is part of the oppressed, he uses the pronoun we to admonish himself and his kinsmen not to die like pigs who are being hunted and penned only to be killed at any moment. The use of words like hunted and penned in the second line of this sonnet, describes the extent of cruelty faced by the blacks. Most of them were arrested and locked up in cells, a place the poet refers to as an inglorious spot, only to be killed without fair trial. In another sense, inglorious spots may also refer to the residence of the blacks, which were inadequate, making them vulnerable to the attacks of the whites. While around us, back the mad and hungry dogs. In this line, the poet describes his oppressors as mad and hungry dogs watching over their prey in exasperation. The dogs bark so loud and laugh at the black American for his terrible fate which is to die. The poet asserts that dying like pigs is never an option to choose. This is because it robs them of so many things, including their honor, freedom, and above all, 
their humanity. If dying like pigs robs the oppressed of their humanity, then the actions of violence meted out by the oppressors will strip them of their own humanity too. The use of mad and hungry dogs to describe the oppressors who find the plight and agony of the oppressed as humorous only goes on to describe their lack of regard for humanity. If we must die, oh let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain, then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. Once again in this quatrain, the speaker prescribes the manner in which he and his kinsmen should die if they have to. He talks of honor and dignity as the words everyone should remember any time they think of their death. The oppressed are admonished not to spill their precious blood for nothing, for dying like pigs would only rob them of so many beautiful things they are to enjoy as humans. It also gives the oppressors more authority to assert control over the lives of the black people while mocking them as they suffer. The poet therefore encourages his people to be brave and courageous in order to repel all forms of cruelty leveled upon them by their oppressors. Doing this, he says, will force the oppressors to recognize their humanity and pay their respects to them for their efforts in seeking for change even though they may be dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows, deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we will face the Medros' cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back. In this sestet, the speaker calls on to his people one more time to fight the common enemy. He proposes violent resistance as the best option to relieve them from their predicament. Even though the oppressed are outnumbered, he still maintains that he and his folks match their oppressors with violence for violence because either way, they were all going to die and would rather die spilling their blood for a great cause that will emancipate them from their suffering and agony than die like pigs doing nothing about their desperate situation. And for their thousand blows, deal one death blow. This line gives an idea as to how violent the poet expects his people to be when fighting back. He acknowledges that he and his kinsmen are outnumbered. Therefore, he advocates for precision and efficacy in carrying out their violent activities. That is to say, for the thousand blows or punches that the oppressed group receives, they should return just one blow, making sure that they hit the target to death if need be. What though before us lies the open grave? The speaker in this line expects the oppressed group to fight without having concern if their graves are dug right in front of them. This is because death is inevitable and being under the threat of death already should make them fearless seeing their graves in front of them. The poem ends on a note of resilience and bravery on the part of the oppressed as the poet encourages his people to fight through pain even if they die. His kinsmen should fight like men and succumb not to cowardice regardless of how desperate their situation is. This, he says, will make heroes out of them and even the monsters that they feared will come to respect their acts of courage and bravery.